All right, I am going to get us started. Um, thank you all so much for joining. I know some folks are still trickling in, um, but we will um, do some introductions to get started and then hopefully everyone will be able to uh, join us shortly. Um, I want to give a quick overview of the agenda for our presentation this evening um, in the session. Um, I know the Q&A is probably what a lot of you are here, here for. Um, we will we'll be covering a lot of your frequently asked questions um, and frankly, just a lot of information in general during the session. So please keep track of your questions. We will have plenty of time at the end for you to drop them in the chat box and then we'll go through as many as we can. Um, so just to, for some quick overview on us and our role in the process, um, LEAP, the Local Energy Alliance Program, was started 13 years ago to help Virginians be more energy efficient. Our weatherization crews help folks with weatherization, insulation, pipe sealing, HVACs, and more. Our mission is to make homes safer, healthier, and more affordable while reducing energy usage and mitigating climate change. And of course, renewable energy and solar power are a big part of that. So Solarize is a community-based outreach initiative that is managed by LEAP. It reduces the cost and complexity of going solar by providing a resource for both education and installation. Through a competitive review process, LEAP evaluates proposals from local installers and selects high quality installers that commit to providing discounted pricing to all of our program participants. Um, and I am Katie Van Langen. I'm the co-executive director for LEAP and I'm also the Solarize program director. I'm not only the Solarize program director, I'm also a program participant. Um, these are photos of the solar panels on my home that were installed last year through Solarize. Um, I'm also joined by Deborah Ehrenstein, our Solarize coordinator. Many of you may have emailed with her already, as well as Brian Campbell, our marketing and outreach manager. Uh, LEAP is a small nonprofit, and you can rest assured that we are personally reading all of your emails. So if you reach out, you will know that your email is going to a real person and one of us will likely be getting back to you. Uh, Solarize is made possible through our partnerships with municipalities and nonprofits throughout the state. They they have their climate goals um, and they want to help as many people to go solar as possible. So they really trust us in the work that they do and they help us to spread the word to their residents. Um, and in that vein, today we are joined by John Morrell from Fairfax County, one of our partners for the program. John is the acting director for the Office of Environmental and Energy Coordination. Um, John, uh, do you want to give a quick introduction on Fairfax County and your role in the program? Uh, thank you, Katie. Um, yeah, Fairfax County is very pleased to be partnering again with the Solarize program and the local alliance, um, a local energy um, alliance program. Uh, Fairfax County has has uh, collaborated with LEAP uh, on Solarize since 2014, and we've been pleased to see how this, this coordination of group purchasing helps, uh, helps residents uh, really understand and get good pricing on solar installations. Um, as, as attendees may know, uh, the county has ambitious uh, climate action goals. We're aiming to be a carbon neutral community by 2050. And we recognize that that's something that the government itself can't, certainly can't do on its own. I mean, we have a, a robust uh, uh, private sector and 1.1 million residents. And so I'm very pleased to see the attendance here tonight and, and that um, I, hope, I hope you all um, get sufficient information to uh, help you on your journey to, to um, lower your, your electricity costs and also um, help all of us uh, reduce greenhouse gas emissions. 
Um, there is a, a website on this link on this um, slide, which Brian has also helpfully put in the uh, chat. And on that uh, uh, county website, you'll find uh, an introduction to all things solar, um, some videos from um, that we've recently done of, of people offering testimonials of of how they decided to go solar and 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 um, how they've enjoyed it. And then we also outlined some county incentives such as uh, permit fees are waived um, for solar installations. And also there's a uh, property tax, real estate property tax uh, credit uh, for five years. It's essentially equal to the cost of your installed system. So the cost of your system is deducted from uh, the assessed value um, of your property, so it's it's a tax break for five years. Um, so with that, I welcome um, again all of you and uh, uh, Katie and team. Please take it away. Awesome, thank you so much, John. I really appreciate it. Um, and again, we'll have some time for Q and A later. So if you have more specific questions about Fairfax County or the incentives available. You, we can either share them later or you can follow up with this after. We're happy to connect you with the folks from Fairfax County. Um, so I'm going to keep on going with the presentation. Um, so Solarize has been, um, we launched Solarize in 2014. And since then we've been facilitating the programs across the state. And in the past nine years, we've helped over 1,000 homeowners and businesses to install solar. Last year alone, 299 Virginia residents went solar through SolarEyes, and 67 of them were from Fairfax County. Um, that is the highest number or the highest concentration of new solar installations um, in the state through our program, um, which we're thrilled to see. And a big part of that is from the support from John and his team um, and all of the work that they do to help us spread the word. Um, in addition to Fairfax County, SolarEyes is open to homeowners and businesses anywhere in our coverage area, which is kind of the orange area on this map. Frankly, we serve a lot of folks outside of this area as well. So if you live outside of this area, feel free to reach out. Um, we're always looking to expand. And we also have some installers that cover regions that are um, not noted here on this map. Um, so one question that I get a lot is, why should I get solar through SolarEyes? Why can't I do this on my own? And the Short and easy answer is you can definitely do this on your own, um, but you don't have to. Uh, LEAP is a nonprofit and we facilitate this program to make getting solar as easy as possible for you because we know that sometimes it's hard to know who to trust. Um, SolarEyes is a no cost, no obligation program. So by signing up, you'll get access to a streamlined process, discounted pricing, and vetted installers. We do the work upfront and ask a million questions so that you don't have to. You can feel confident that you're getting a good rate and you can trust the installers that we have selected. And most importantly, we're by your side through the entire process. So you can email us anytime um, and we can answer any questions that you may have. Uh, we have a rigorous process for selecting our installers. We issue a request for proposals to solar contractors for each of our campaign areas. We evaluate those proposals based on price, equipment quality, warranties, capacity, company business practices, and more. Participants who sign up will be assigned to one of these four installers based on their geographic location. Uh, Prospect and Solar Energy World are inst our installers for Fairfax County. And so if you sign up, you will likely be assigned to one of those two based on their current capacity or your particular geography within the um, Northern Virginia region. Brian Hacker, uh, the VP of Sales for Solar Energy World, is also joining us today um, and will be able to answer a lot more of your installer questions during the Q&A later. Uh, Brian, do you want to unmute yourself and do a quick Solar Energy World intro here? Sure. Thanks, Katie. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Brian Hacker. Uh, I'm the Vice President of Sales with Solar Energy World. 
we have been a, a local residential installer in the DMV area for the last 14 years. We started our business back in 2009. Uh, to date, we've got over 22,000 installs throughout the DMV area and the East Coast and the states we operate in. Um, one of the things we pride ourselves about is the fact that everything we do is in-house. So every person that works on every single project is a full-time employee. We don't subcontract um, anything but underground work. Um, and that's kind of the, the, the quick version. Great. Thanks, Brian. And again, Brian um, can answer some more of your particular questions about um, from the installer perspective a little bit later on. So I wanted to just take a step back um, and give you guys a quick overview of how solar works, um, the real basics of it all. Um, so solar panels are comprised of many solar photovoltaic PV cells. Um, and these PV cells produce an electric current when they're exposed to light and when the sun shines on a solar panel. So energy from the sun is absorbed by these PV cells and it creates electrical charges in the panel that causes electricity to flow. The el electricity is converted from a direct current, a DC current, to the alternating current, AC current, which is what we use in our homes. And then we use that energy and the energy that we do not use is sent back to the grid. And that is something called net metering, which you may have heard of and maybe don't fully understand. But net metering allows individuals to reserve their excess electricity produced for future use. So when you produce more energy than you require, the excess will be recorded by your meter as it flows back to the grid and then credited to your account for future use. This bank resets annually. It is worth noting that if you get your electricity through Dominion, there are currently some backlog backlogs in getting net metering set up. These were really started earlier in the year. So we're kind of digging out of that hole right now. So if, for folks who are signing up now to get solar installed, it likely will not be an issue. Um, but if you decide to move forward, your installer will be able to update you on the current status of um, net metering connections. Um, so once you get your solar installed, you'll be able to track your usage um, on it basically an hourly basis with an online monitoring tool that's connected to your inverter. Some folks check this every day. You could look at it once or twice a year, but it's a good tool to make sure everything's working properly. And it's always really nice to see how much energy you're producing. Um, these are just some screenshots from my online monitoring tool. One was just right when I first got the system, I think the first month, and the other one is just um, a graph of the energy produced in one day. Just really cool to see. So I want to touch briefly on some of the frequently asked questions that we get about the program. One is um, about time, how long it takes. So the entire process from contract signature to installation takes an average of three to four months. Um, again, can be more, can be less, but that's really the average that we see. Um, the installation itself only takes a day or two typically. Of course, weather sometimes gets in the way, but one or two days is the average there. Um, another question that is very often comes up is what kind of roofs can we install panels on? So we install on metal or asphalt shingle. Additional roofing types are available. Um, we also can sometimes do flat and membrane roofs, but that's really evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. We often need a larger amount of roof space to make it worthwhile to install on a flat roof. So that's something that we take into consideration if that is your, um, if that, if you fall into that category, feel free to sign up. We can always let you know. Um, we do not on, install on slate or tile or cedar shake roofs. Um, Unfortunately, the cost, a lot of, several of our installers do install on those roofs, but the cost adders that would be required to actually make it possible end up making solar not really feasible. And it really doesn't make sense as a part of our Solarize program. Um, so um, again, if you have any questions, let us know. Feel free to sign up. We can always keep you posted. Um, 
We also get asked a lot about the age and condition of your roof and whether it makes sense to install panels if the roof is old or needs to be replaced soon. If your roof is 10 years old or older, we do recommend replacing it before you install solar. If you're not sure, um, our partner installers are always happy to take a closer look at that in the condition of your roof. Um, once installed, the productive life of the system is over 25 years with minimal maintenance. Um, and actually, um, the panels actually make roofs um, last longer. So if you've recently had your roof replaced and um, you get panels on, it increases um, the how, how long your roofs are able to stay in good condition. Um, another frequently asked question we get is around HOAs. Um, homeowners associations can sometimes be a challenge for folks looking to get solar installed. In 2020, legislation was passed in the General Assembly that says HOAs can only impose reasonable restrictions on the installation of rooftop solar. Restrictions are unreasonable if they increase the cost of a project by 5% or decrease the project's energy by 10%. Um, we partnered with a local law firm, Reisinger Gooch, to create a guide for both homeowners and HOAs to navigate this process. Um, Brian is going to drop a link into the chat with this guide. Um, but the bottom line is, if you are having trouble with your HOA, um, you still have a chance. Um, and please reach out to us and we can kind of help walk you through that process and what your best next steps are. Um, okay, so now you know the basics. Let's talk about how Solarize specifically works. Many of you have already signed up already, but if you haven't, the best place to start is by filling out our interest form at solarizeva.org. We ask for some basic information that will help us and your installers get you started in the process. After you fill out the form, we'll do a satellite review of your property and evaluate your solar potential. Ideally, we are looking for a southern exposure with minimal shading, dormers, or penetrations like chimneys or skylights. We can also put arrays on roofs with southeastern, southwestern exposures, east or western exposures, um, but really northern exposures are not going to work at all. Um, if your roof isn't a good fit, we also look to see if ground mount might be an option. And if all looks good, we'll request a copy of your annual electric usage. This is usually a section of your electric bill. Um, there's a little square that la lists by month um, your uh, kilowatt per hour usage. Um, and that helps our installers determine what size system will be the right fit for you. Um, what I want to do here is just give you a glimpse into what we're looking for when we do the satellite assessment. Uh, the house on the left is my house. The roof is considered good for solar. You can see where the panels were placed. There's both a southeastern and a southwestern exposure, both with no tree shading. The house on the right is one of my neighbors. You can see there's still a slight southeastern exposure, but there's a pretty significant amount of tree shading from the tree next door. So this house would unfortunately not be good for solar. They might get some sun during the day, but it wouldn't be enough to make solar worthwhile. So that's really what we're looking at there. Um, trees play an important role in our ecosystem and they provide a lot of natural cooling to your home. So we never recommend cutting down trees in, in order to install, install solar unless the tree is already dead. Um, if your roof isn't good for solar or you decide not to move forward, we highly re recommend taking other steps to make your home more energy efficient. You can sign up for a home energy assessment from LEAP or take advantage of other incentives that are available. Brian's gonna drop a few links in the chat now. Um, so once we know that your home is good for solar, and we have your annual energy usage, we'll connect you with an installer based on your location, and then they'll connect with you directly to discuss your goals and next steps. Uh, the installer will send you a proposal that shows your cost, estimated production, materials, and more. The pricing will vary based on the size of your system, but all installers will be providing the negotiated rates set by the program. These rates are 10 to 20% below market value. 
And then once you're ready, you can sign your contract. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the entire process, including system design, permitting, interconnection, takes an average of three to four months. Uh, so another really big question we get, and I know it's really important for anyone going through the process, about, is about pricing. So the primary way we think about pricing for solar is by looking at the price per watt. It helps to compare proposals that may look very different. So the Solar Energy Industries Association estimates the national average cost of a residential solar system at $3.01 per watt. Through SolarEyes, we've pre-negotiated the per watt pricing. The installers are, and we pre-negotiated the per watt pricing. Um, the installers are able to provide us discounts on all of this because of there's so many of you all that are interested in going solar. So we're able to get bulk pricing essentially, um, and that through that we've been able to avoid the pretty significant price increases that many are seeing across the board for solar. Um, like I said earlier, solarized pricing is about 10 to 20% lower than market rates, which ends up being pretty significant. Um, the solarized per watt rates are set, but your cost is going to change, it's going to vary based on your energy needs and the size of your system. So one home might only need um, a five kilowatt system and one home might need a 15 kilowatt system. Obviously the price would be very different for those two. So what you're seeing on the screen here are some averages. The US average, the average cost through SolarEyes, um, and the average cost through SolarEyes is Fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars. The average amount of time it will take to recoup your investment, what we call the break-even point, is ten years. There's also a number of incentives to help out with the cost of solar. Um, the solar income tax credit is currently at thirty percent as, as a result of the Inflation Reduction Act that was passed last year. Um, this is effectively reducing the cost of your system by thirty percent, which is huge. Um, it is important to note that this is a credit, not a rebate. So you must owe federal income tax in order to be credited back. Um, your credit balance can roll over to subsequent years as long as credit is available. I believe it can be rolled out over up to five years. Um, solar Renewable Energy Certificates, SRECs, are another way of providing value to solar owners. So for every 1,000 kilowatt hours of electricity that your system generates, you earn one SREC. Um, so when the Virginia Clean Economy was passed in 2020, it opened up the link for or opened up the market in Virginia for SRECs. Um, so that's also something that's a little bit confusing, but it's good for you to know that it's another thing that will add value over time that you'll get payments back for, which is really great. Um, and as John mentioned earlier, um, many municipalities also have solar incentives. So you can go check out the link that John shared to learn more about Fairfax County's incentives specifically. If you are on this webinar and are not from Fairfax County, um, I would recommend Googling the name of your municipality and solar incentives to see what's available Available, you typically can find the most up-to-date information by looking at that it does kind of change pretty regularly. Um, one other program that I wanted to flag is um, Dominion's Low Income and Age Qualifying Solar Program. This program provides a free uh, small size solar array to Dominion customers that fall below a certain income threshold. So if you're considered low income through their programs, or if you are over 60 or have someone in your household that's over 60, and then you also fall below a certain income threshold. Um, if you think you might qualify, um, feel free to reach out to us and we can see if you're eligible. Um, you can just reply to the email that um, you got the confirmation from the webinar. We're, we're happy to let you know. The one um, tricky part about that is oftentimes the size of the system that you get through that program will not offset all of your energy needs, but it is free. Um, so if you do qualify from an income perspective, um, it, is a, it is a great way of getting solar without a huge investment.
Um, this slide is just another way of looking at that same pricing information that I shared earlier using a 10 kilowatt system as an example. Um, for most folks, the upfront cost of going solar is a lot more than they thought it would be. Um, but I found that the most helpful way to understand the value of solar is to think about how it offsets your electric bill. So in Virginia, the average cost of electricity is $180 per month. And that's been increasing at a rate of about 2% per year. And with solar, you don't really need to worry about those rate increases at all. They don't impact you. And after one year, you'll have saved 2000 over $2,000. And in 10 years, you'll break even. And then any additional savings on top of that is just money in your pocket. Um, so really, you're just paying for your solar instead of paying Dominion um, or your electric provider. And so it just feels like more of an investment um, in yourself, in your future, and in the environment. Um, so now that we've covered all of the basics, here are some key dates and next steps. Um, if you're interested in moving forward and getting a satellite assessment of your roof, make sure you sign up uh, at our website, solarizeva.org, by August 31st. And if you have any questions throughout the process, please reach out anytime and we're happy to help. Um, we will be, we are recording this and we will be sending out um, the webinar recording to you all um, in the next few days, um, probably early next week, but we will get it to you shortly. Um, but if you have any questions other than that, um, again, please feel, feel free to email us. But